So today we are going to look at how to structure an MYP lab report. First of all, the structure of a lab report should include define the problem, secondly, hypothesis, thirdly, variables, then materials, procedure or method, and a blank results table. This all makes up criteria B of a lab report. Criteria C would also include data processing, process data table, a graph, patterns, evaluation of hypothesis, evaluation of methods, and suggestions of improvement. Right, for this video, we're just going to look at criteria B. And if I were you, I'd start with identifying the variables. Remember, we have three variables, independent variable, dependent variable, and control variables. Independent variable is the thing you change. And this goes on the x-axis. Dependent variable is the thing you measure. And this goes on the y-axis. And control variable is the thing you keep the same. Include all the variables into this column. Remember, independent variable, there should only be one. Same for dependent variable. However, you can have many control variables. For an independent variable, you should include a data range. So example, if you're changing the temperature in the experiment, you should include what temperatures you're using. So is it 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees? So the range of data you'll be using. Um, the dependent variable is the thing you measure, so how will you measure this? And again, the control variable is the things you control, so how will you make sure that everything remains constant? Okay, define the problem. To find the problem takes the following structure. How is the something dependent on the something? Here you should include your dependent variable and your independent variable. So, if you're thinking of rates of reaction, how is the rate of reaction dependent on the temperature? Could be an example. You should also include an explanation. This explanation should say, how does this link to what you have studied in class? You should explain why this question or problem is relevant. And you should include some scientific evidence or data from your research. Right, next thing, hypothesis. In your hypothesis, you should include some of the following keywords. Increase, or sorry, if, then, because, increase, and decrease. The hypothesis also can take the following structure, as you can see. Right? You can clearly see that if, then, and because are very evident in the hypothesis. And I'm going to again relate this to the example of temperature inf temperature's influence on rate reaction. So, if I increase the temperature, then the rate of reaction will increase because. You can see that I have included an independent a dependent variable into my hypothesis. This all needs to be supported, so you need to give a description of why you made your prediction. You need to support this by using sources of evidence from the internet, books, magazines, and it's also important that you reference all sources used. Right, next thing is materials. So, this should be created as a list. Here you need to be specific. An example of this, I will show you an incorrect way and a correct way of doing a materials list. So firstly, I've included water, beaker and hydrochloric acid. This is not specific enough. You need to give exact quantities of what you're using. So you're using 100 mils of water. You're using 250 mil beakers and you have two of them, and you have 10 mils of hydrochloric acid. 
you should also include any safety equipment used throughout the experiment. Right, next is procedure or method. This is a plan of what you want to do during the experiment. Any changes to this plan should be mentioned in the evaluation. This is part of criteria C, this evaluation. A method should be step by step, so it should include step one, step two, etc. Do not include I, we, us, them. Okay? You should have the following. So 10 mils of water is placed in a beaker. That is the correct way of saying. You should not say I placed 10 mils of water. Remove the I. You should include variables. So you need to discuss how you will measure your dependent variables and how will you will control your control variables. You need to include the quantities that you have mentioned in your materials list. And also it is important that you repeat um, your experiment to get more reliable results. This, so you should do this more than once. Finally, you should have a blank table of results. Before you begin the experiment, you should be there, there should be a table there that you have to fill in already. A nice way of structuring the table is as follows. Include your independent variable and its unit. So if that was temperature or if that was distance, you would include degrees Celsius or meters. Dependent variable should be included as well, along with its unit. And remember, dependent variables should be measured more than once, so you should have trial one, trial two, and trial three. You are probably familiar with the word average. You should then try and get an average of these. But a more correct way of saying this is get the mean. Do not use the word average as it is not scientific enough. Also, units should be included into the top row of the table. They do not need to be included throughout. Once you have all these parts done, you are ready for the experiment and moving on to criteria C. Hopefully this is of some help to you.